you go, a new generation starting all over. In a few months' time, this baby would even be strong enough to, to start up the migration up north and by July, August, even cross the Mara River. It's incredible to think that that little thing just, just born there, so, so helpless, in six months' time will be crossing huge rivers full of crocodiles that's like 12, 13 feet long. You know, and besides that, of course, they also have to travel 400 kilometers to get there through hyena and lion infested savannah. Less than 10 minutes after it's born, the baby is on its feet. This is where the baby will imprint on its mother. <laughs> they will get to know one another scent and call. This is just the start of the wildebeest's mass births. 200,000 calves will be born over the coming weeks. It's an extremely smart, adaptive strategy. On these open plains, the newborns are easy prey to the predators that follow the migration. Mm. So by flooding the market with so many newborns at once, tilts the odds in the wildebeest's favor. Some will be taken, but many more will survive. There are huge challenges ahead for the newborn wildebeests. In two months' time, the calves will be ready to join their mothers on the return trip up north. But this first 24 hours is crucial for its survival. But with so many newborns today, the first day is a trying time. This is a little water hole outside of camp, and uh, this is some of the only standing water in the area. And these animals uh, found it and uh, yeah, great delight. But uh, this is definitely for many of these young wildebeest that was born this morning or last night. This would be the first time that they are drinking. And there's a little bit of pandemonium as uh, the wildebeest start to run around. They, they lose their mothers. And um, there's a fear of them just standing around. There's this one here in the grass that clearly lost its mom. And um, few of the adult females have been coming around just smelling it and showing a little bit of concern. And this poor thing must have been born this morning early and to already lose your mom. Some interest. And there's a second baby that's also coming up now, even younger. That one's tiny. You can still see that umbilical cord hanging down. You can see there's a few mothers coming up smelling. Um, some of these lost babies, and they would immediately push them away once they realize that that's not their calf. The world of it is very much like bats or flamingos, where every uh, calf has a particular frequency that the mother zones in on. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very, it's, it's not uncommon for babies to get lost, but they generally find each other. Luckily for this calf, its mother responds to its cries, and the two are reunited. The pair head off with the baby sticking closer by this time. <laughs> with the biggest range of cars to buy entirely online, it's no wonder everyone cinched it. Alf cinched it, Chris and Sue cinched it with no surprise babies. <laughs> all give birth at the same time. Hundreds of thousands of calves are born in a two to three week period. For a species constantly on the move, this is an excellent survival strategy. The newborns are vulnerable to the predators that follow the migration. The only safety is in numbers. So the female wildebeest have timed their births to flood the market. Some will fall to predators, but with so many young, the odds are in the wildebeest's favor. For the newborns, life starts quickly. The calves are up and running within 10 minutes of being born. The first 24 hours is crucial for these newborns. This is when they bond with their mothers. But in a massive herd, the little ones often get lost. Jean has found a calf wandering along a main road, alone. I just came across a baby wildebeest that's obviously lost. And what happens is they, they basically print on anything. So we saw this vehicle driving fairly close to him and running up to him. And at this stage of their lives, they are you know, they're so dependent on, on uh, a big creature taking care of them. They're all hungry being mom. That uh, even if I get out of the car, will come right up to me. Quite sad. The 
baby heads off over the plains in search of its mother. Luckily, it chooses the direction that takes it back to the protection of the herd. And that's a good thing. Just up the road, Jean finds a predator. I just came upon a cheetah. She's down in a crouching position that looks to me like she's hunting. She's, uh, she's looking at, at me either like wildebeest. There's quite a few of them around. Um, but there's also like four or five Thompson's gazelles here that, that she's more than likely arms and also sees like these, these Thompson's gazelle are moving towards her but also still not looking at her. There she goes. which one to go after and it's so important that you have to focus on one gazelle and just stick behind that thing then it seems like she was going between two different groups and she, she didn't uh, get lucky on this one the cheetah has missed its prey it's too hot now for another attempt so it retreats and will look for any shame it can find she's now walking back to her cubs, which seems to be the only shade in the area. It's actually a safari vehicle that's parked behind us, but also witnessing this. And the cubs are lying under the vehicle, and she's on the way there as well. There's no lunch for them, but the cubs seem fine with that. Now they have more time to play. <laughs> so the mum's came to this vehicle to join her cubs. This is uh, the only shade around. Yeah, exactly. They need to improvise, and uh, they are really having a good time lying on under, the a, under a vehicle to do, do them. And uh, extremely playful, and uh, just enjoying the, the new tyres that's in this vehicle and giving it a good chew. These guys are going to be stuck here for a while. I'm trying to uh, make sure that none of these cubs come and lie down on the car, because the moment they get under your car, you ain't going anywhere. These two guys are pretty much down for the rest of the day, so I hope these guys have a good trip. Or maybe they will leave us. <laughs> the tourists will have to stay put until the cheetahs decide to move, which will most likely mean a few more hours until the temperature <laughs> starts to cool and the cheetahs head off to find dinner. These herds will spend the next few months in the short grass plains, feeding on the rich grasses and nurturing their young. But soon the rains will start moving north, signaling the herds that it's time to get going again. The wildebeest migration is not just a defining piece of life on the Serengeti, it is also a key driver of the ecosystem. Over the course of the year, the millions of wildebeest drastically affect the landscape. The animals graze on the grasses like a giant team of lawnmowers, allowing new shoots to grow and keeping the plains healthy. With millions of wildebeests, there's a lot of waste. Some of that dung fertilizes the grass, which in turn helps it to grow for the next time the animals pass. But there is so much dung that nature has developed other solutions to make sure the plains are not overwhelmed. On the Serengeti, an army of its smallest residents go to work. Yeah, I was going to say, dumbbells dumb would be, be helpful for that. It's incredible to actually watch the whole thing happen from the beginning, where this beetle has almost cut out this ball.